So, have I ever mentioned that I love 3D platformers? Okay, yeah, I might have a couple times in the past, but seriously, I love this genre. And to build on that, I have been loving this resurgence of 3D platformers going on, largely thanks to the indie game scene. The past five years or so, we've gotten a ton of new titles in the genre, from small but passionate teams of developers who also love the genre a lot. From hallway platformers to collect-a-thons, from the small and simple to the large and ambitious, this genre has felt really alive lately, and I've been absolutely loving it. As such, to no surprise, I've been trying out a lot of these indie 3D platformers, as you'll likely see more of in my future videos. And I've become a fan of several specific developers as a result. And one of my favorites that I more recently came across is Marcus Horn, better known as Siactro. You may not recognize the name, but regular viewers of mine will definitely recognize some of his work. Siactro has kind of made a name for himself in making bite-sized 3D platformers, ones that often take no more than an hour to beat, that also perfectly capture the look and feel of that early era of the genre, and also often have some creepy surprises thrown in. If that sounds familiar, yep, this is the very same developer behind Tori 3D and Tori 2, both of which shared a spot on my Games of 2021 list, and McBat64, which I talked about in my Obscure 3D Platformers video. All these games have been delightful to play, and absolutely dirt cheap too, with the most expensive of one up until now having been McBat64 at only $2. But here's the thing, those are just the games on Switch. Go onto his itch.io or Game Jolt page, and you'll see that he's made quite a few different games, his earliest dating back to 2014. And among these is Kiwi64, a one-level homage to a certain Rareware IP. Feel free to guess which one. It ended up being the most popular of Siactro's Game Jolt games, and given he went on to do quite a few more 3D platformers, it seems this idea stuck with him. Heck, McBat64 actually serves as a semi-sequel to it, with Kiwi even cameoing in the game. But as you could guess from the title of this video, Kiwi's adventures didn't end there. Sure enough, earlier this year, Siactro announced that Kiwi was coming back with Super Kiwi64, and just going off that reveal trailer, it didn't look like it was going to be just one level this time. The game came out on... Wait, hold on, the game came out today, what? So yeah, um... Siactro ended up offering me a key for the game a couple weeks ago, which I greatly appreciate by the way, thank you Siactro. And to clarify, this isn't a sponsored review like I did with Nickelodeon Kart Racers 3. Heck, Siactro didn't even specifically request that I do a video on the game, but I wanted to do one anyway, both since I was already excited to try this game out, and as a thank you for Siactro's really generous offer. But, before we get to talking about his latest endeavor in the 3D platforming space, let's talk about Beanie. I know, I know, far from my best segue, but I felt this was something worth talking about first. Beanie was another Siactro game that came out this past October, serving as a prelude game to Super Kiwi 64, which was the main reason I wanted to talk about it first. That because Beanie's a pretty neat game. The story actually directly ties into Kiwi's eventual Super 64 adventure, as he's in the midst of making a raft for his journey and requires a strong glue. So he asks his friend, the aforementioned Beanie, if she could gather up some honey from the forest. And so, as Beanie, you hop your way through the treetops of the forest to get to each level's honey hive. Pretty straightforward. Also, yep, Beanie's a 2D platformer, and a pretty simple one at that. Each of the bite-sized levels has you rolling about and hopping from branch to branch to get up to the hive at the top, avoiding whatever hazards get in your way in the process. Now granted, most of the hazards just briefly knock Beanie back, and as you climb up, you've got yourself the safety net to fall back on if you miss a jump, so you're never at risk of losing a whole ton of progress. As such, the game may seem on the way too easy side, and while yes, it is easy, the level design does still provide its fair share of challenge here and there, combined with Beanie's jumping being on the heavier side. Plus, Siadra's style of game doesn't usually lean towards being super difficult, play something like Silas Sybil if you want that, but instead aims to capture the general feel of those classic era games, from the look and atmosphere to that simple but satisfying gameplay. It does make his games more appealing to those who grew up with those classic games, but even overlooking the nostalgia element, they're still fun to play, Beanie included. And in Beanie's case, it absolutely nails that Donkey Kong Country feel it's going for, with the game's visuals all being pre-rendered sprites, and the soundtrack being catchy and oozing with atmosphere. Atmosphere. And of course, in classic Siactro fashion, Beanie's got a creepy side to it, but I think I'll keep further detail on that a secret. Don't want to spoil all the surprises. But with that said, once you have all the honey gathered up, Kiwi's able to make his raft and set off, wanting to find a mysterious floating island. And while he does find said island, a storm ends up whisking him up and destroying the raft, leaving him stranded on the island. The game actually ends with a taste of what Super Kiwi 64 will end up playing like, but alas, 
the journey continues elsewhere. Though once you do all this, you unlock an additional level and time trial for all the levels. And you unlock Tori as a playable character for completing all the time trials, complete with his double jump and cool sunglasses, so it's worth doing all of them. But yeah, Beanie's a fun time, for as short as it is. It's only a dollar, so if you want to give it a go, it's available on Switch, Steam, and on Seattro's itch.io page. But now that we've set the stage, how's about we pick up where poor Kiwi's story left off? Which of course brings us now to Super Kiwi 64 itself. We get a nice look around of our hub area for the title screen, and if you wait long enough, you'll get those story images from Beanie that showed how Kiwi got caught in the storm, to give context for those who may not have been following the ongoing story. Though to not be following the ongoing story would be your loss, frankly. But yeah, Kiwi's stranded on this island, but is getting some help from this tinkerer dog, who's needing these magic stones to power his plane that'll get them off the island. And there's your goal, collect the magic stones from the game's various levels, and then escape the island on the plane. You probably guessed it from the way I described the objective, but yep, Super Kiwi 64 takes the collectathon approach. Fitting given Kiwi's original inspiration. And even for a game as small as it is, it does pull off this style of gameplay pretty solidly. Each level has six magic stones, with a variety of objectives to get them all. Though in most levels, collecting all the golden gears and jumping through all the rings are two of said objectives. The short length does actually work to the game's benefit in this regard, as these objectives never feel too repetitive or like they overstay their welcome. But it also doesn't feel like too little. Each of the levels, while small compared to others in the genre, still have some decent size to them, and allow for a lot of freedom to use Kiwi's moves. Kiwi doesn't have a ton to his moveset, with running, jumping, gliding, and attacking being all the moves you have, but the attack serves a secondary purpose. Wall climbing. Kiwi's able to stick his beak into most walls and cling there endlessly. And since you're able to jump out of this, you can use this ability to climb walls. Honestly, Kiwi might be my favorite of the playable characters from Seactra's Platformer Saga, having a nice mix of Tori's speed and McBat's aerial options. Only thing that'd make him perfect now is if he could roll around like Beanie. But yeah, going back to the levels, there's eight of them, two per world theme. You've got your forest area, your desert factory area, your super creepy area, which given it's the actro, you can bet it's quite creepy, and your beach area, one being a pirate beach, and the other being a city beach. Oh hey, Kiwi was saying in Macbat 64 that he wanted a beach level in his next game. Guess he got his wish! All these levels are unlocked from the get-go, and you only need 40 of the 48 magic stones to beat the game. So in classic collectathon style, you have a little bit of wiggle room, in case there's a mission you don't want to do. Though there is a benefit to getting all 48 stones, as you unlock a secret area that, initially, seemed kinda underwhelming. It just gave me a 49th magic stone and that's it. But then I noticed these symbols on the back wall. Symbols that I also saw hidden away in previous levels, but in a different order. What if I were to... Oh! I'm the dog now! Yep, as it turns out, your reward for getting all the magic stones is a cheat code room, and several of the codes are hidden away in the levels. Not sure if all of them are, but some of them are at least. I ended up going all out and doing every possible combination just to see how many secrets there were. And believe me, there's some pretty neat surprises here. Why hello, fellow robot enemy. How goes the patrol? Ouch! Uh, uh, ignore the flashing kiwi bird there. Side note, did I mention that I like the way the Magic Stone collectibles look? Such a simple design, yet so appealing regardless. Oh, also, I am the Magic Stone collectible, but that's a minor detail. There's a bunch of fun secrets through these cheat codes, but probably my favorite is the secret level, which contains a 50th magic stone. The level in question? The single level from the original Kiwi 64. This was a fun easter egg to find and go through. The original Kiwi is even hanging out at the top with the magic stone. These secrets remind me a lot of the secret areas from McBat 64 that you could find once you had unlimited flight unlocked, which was one of my favorite aspects of that game. So I'm glad the actor included something along those lines again. And this is all on top of the visuals, which like his previous games capture that N64 era look pretty accurately, and the music. The soundtrack is really solid, with the forest level theme and the beach level theme being my personal favorites. So yeah, Super Kiwi 64 is also a really fun time, especially if you're nostalgic for this era like I am. I do admittedly kind of wish it was a bit longer, simply because Kiwi's so fun to control and more opportunities to play around with that toolbox would be appreciated, but what we got here is still a fun treat. And hey, given both Tori 3D and Tori 2 got post-launch levels, it's a possibility. So Seattro, if you're watching this, and you're potentially considering adding more levels in the future, or doing a Super Kiwi 128, I wouldn't say no. In any case, if you want to try Super Kiwi 64 for yourself, it's available as of today on Steam, Switch, and itch.io. 
Sorry that this video ended up as short as it did, but hey, given the games in question are pretty short as well, it's fitting if you ask me. All in all, I recommend not only both Super Kiwi 64 and Beanie, but Seatro's games in general. They've got a lot of charm to them, and make for fun bite-sized experiences. Definitely worth a try in my opinion. With all that said, this has been Benjamage, thank you all for watching, and until the next video, have a nice day everybody.